the Lord, y'all. Y'all stand on your feet. Let's Hallelujah. Up. Let me take my shoes off because you know I ain't even playing. Pray for God. Right? Oh, oh, Lord. Lord. Come on. We're getting ready to walk into a season of prayer.
worship unto the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's worship.
honest. Yes. He's fair. Yes. He's just. Yes. Our God. Yes. Our King. Yes. Our Lord. Yes. Our Savior. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, God. Welcome. Special welcome today. Yes, God. Special welcome today. We thank God you showed up once again. You gave him praise this morning. You gave him honor. We gave him glory. And for that, we're eternally grateful this morning. Anybody still wants to come in the building, we're here, 625 Eastern Boulevard. Just for today now, like they say in AA, this is just for today. So get on out here, I get seated, get comfortable, and we're going to proceed with the service. May God continue to bless and keep you, his countenance shine upon you, and give you peace. God bless. Hallelujah. 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 God is so amazing, y'all. Y'all can be in the presence Thank of the God. Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. God is so amazing, y'all. I just. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was glad when they said I'm to be to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. To, to gather yet again. Yeah. One more time. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be able to gather the saints and worship and love on each other and bless yeah. God together. It's good to bless yeah. God at home, but when you get amongst the saints, you put yours in and I put mine in and yeah. praise get contagious and mine jump on you, yours jump on me. Woo. Come on, it done got good. <laughs> that's, why it's, that's why it is so important to gather. Amen. It's a, it's a privilege, y'all. People in other countries don't get to do that. Amen. We got to we can't take for granted the house of God and the Lord moving in his house. Woo, glory. There is a word from the Lord on today. Before we go on today, we're going to have Minister Brad come and lead us in prayer. Amen. Amen. God, we love you. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Heavenly Father. Yeah, thank you for this day. Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you watched over us, Heavenly Father, that you have made me to protect us, God. Oh, yes. I pray for an obedient heart, God. Yes. That's yes. my will be yours, Heavenly Father. Yes. Allow us to have, allow you to have your way in our hearts, Lord. Oh, yes. I pray, Heavenly Father, that whatever we came for, we know that you are able. You know that you, we know that you will, yes. and it's already done. Yes. I pray, Heavenly Father, that anyone who is burdened down, Heavenly Father, that they would seek you. Because your word tells us, Heavenly Father, that when we seek you, we will find you. Yes. It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. 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 But before I get into that, I want to show you something that the Lord did in my life one time. <laughs> it was an act of obedience that he had called me to, and he reminded me of it. Um, I had two women of God speak into my life in the last two days, and they both said the same thing. So I said, okay, God, I heard, I heard you. They both said, pack light. Oh, my mama oh. said it this morning. She said it two times, hey. and then Prophetess Lisa said it the other day. So. I want to show you something. One time the Lord told me to go. Uh, I was going out of town. Now, during this time, I was still struggling with my health. I was still uh, battling between being paralyzed on my left side and waist down. It was just happening in and out. So I was going out of town. And this was the first time that I was going by myself because normally I had somebody I would travel with. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have nobody to carry my bag. Right. Through the airport. And so the Lord said, pack two bags. Mm -hmm. Now, when he first told me to go on the trip, I went to the closet. I was like, woo. Uh -huh. I got all my, I got my good bags out, y'all. I said, get my good suitcases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Woo. Yeah. Getting everything. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I need all these things. 
That be me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need all this, God. And as I had all that, and the Lord said, now how you gonna carry all that? <laughs> so I looked at it. Okay. <laughs> and then the Lord said, two bags. Uh-huh. Oh, Lord, my God. Right? So I said, all right, Lord. So then I had to make a decision. Because I felt like I needed all of this. But there two. So right now I got one, two, three, and a box. All right. So I said, all right. Now this bag was all the things that I had to have. All right. These are my essentials. I couldn't, I had, you know, if you know me, I travel my Bible. I gotta have my notebooks because I don't know when God is gonna start speaking and I need to write it down. So these were the things I know I needed to have. But then I said, okay, well, these are the things over here that I just feel like that I also need. So I said, I'm gonna take the big bag because I need to fix things. So I start packing the bag now. I was like, okay, I got everything in the bag. <laughs> and I was like, okay, God, I'm good, I'm ready. All my things. So I'm gonna take these two bags. That was yeah. right. But the bag was much heavier. I had a big bag. So I had the two bags. So the Lord said, okay, you got your bag. So I ain't gonna take this bag. I'm gonna set this because that's the small one. I'm gonna put that to the side. So I got my two bags. And I looked, but but when I had looked at the bag, y'all, stuff was busting out of the top. They couldn't zip. And the Lord said it's still too heavy. He still got too many things. Too much. Woo. Too much. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Okay. Okay, Lord. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, now they zip. Now they zip. Okay, they zip. So I'm sitting there like, okay. All right, God, I'm ready. So the Lord said, pick up your bag. <laughs> <laughs> If they don't, I got to roll myself, God. So, so, so. You know what I did, y'all? I actually, I set the, both the bags down on the floor. I sat on the floor myself, and I looked at the bag. Then I just left it for a moment. Had to just think about what I really needed. Yeah. Then I heard the Lord say, two bags. One, two, but my purse is a bag. Oh, oh Lord, you're working me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if I take my purse, that equals three bags. Yes. I got a pack even lighter than this guy. Yes. Woo! 
Our word on Friday was follow the full set of instructions. And though this was very much, it was a real thing. Like I literally had to process what I could take and what I couldn't take. But when it all boiled down, I had to obey God. Yeah. Yeah. So all the extra yeah. stuff, I had to leave. <laughs> this evening, too bad. And my Bible had to fit in my purse. Because you know I ain't going to that. Had to fit in my purse. So I had to take my two bags. And I'm so glad I did because the ride was not easy. I had a person that I did have people that pushed me through the through the uh, through the airport, but but some of them was impatient. So I had to let the bag sit on my lap, and I carried my purse. And what if I would have had all the extra bags? See, I said all that to say you don't know why God is telling you to do a thing. Yeah. But if you're willing to obey, if you're willing to obey, even when you don't understand. I was just talking to my love this morning and I said, I think we have counted church as common. We believe the weatherman and the news and the government and our mama, our daddy, our great grandma was burning sage in the basement. We believe them more than we believe the report of the Lord. When you come to church, don't just go step into a sanctuary where you don't believe the word is true that's coming from the pulpit. Because it's your instructions to how to get through your week, your month, your year, your life. These are instructions from heaven. Yeah. The man or the woman of God has sat before God and listen. This ain't, these ain't, I don't know nobody. Let me speak. I don't know nobody else's word. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you something I didn't hear from God or God didn't confirm. Amen. Amen. So these words that come from this desk, from the podium, from the pulpit, from the man or the woman of God, it's life. Job said, I will esteem the word of God over my necessary for God. Your obedience in this season is how you're going to be able to get God. Yes, God. Thank you. So I'm glad Brad prayed for an obedient heart this morning because you can lose your job but as long as you obey God. Oh, God. You can lose your very person that you love on this earth, but as long Come as you on. obey God, Glory. Glory. you're going to be all right. Yes. Everybody can't go, and it's okay. Everybody won't understand, and that's all right. Okay? Come on. Yeah. Somebody you love may or might not approve of what it is that God is doing in your life. Yeah. But you got to do it anyway. Because we are walking into a season of blessings. Amen. We're walking into a season. Yes, there's a lot of hard things going on around us. Don't get me wrong. We got family in the land and all of that. But the people of God that have been obeying the instruction of the Lord... You good. Amen. Now those that ain't been obeying the instruction of the Lord, I'm worried for you. Please. Thank you, God. Please. Thank you, Lord. Please. Thank you. Our word today is turn the page. Turn the page. So we have been um we have been on a beautiful journey, y'all. We have really been on a beautiful journey. I'm so excited about it. Y'all know I, I do my best to keep my ear to heaven and obey the instruction of the Lord. Is it always easy? Is it always comfortable? Is it always what I want to do? No. But I'm afraid to disobey God. Because I've seen how that's went. Smallest instruction that you miss can be a choice between life and death. Yeah. I remember the Lord told me to leave a person's house and I, he said leave tonight. And I thought I'll leave tomorrow because I'm comfortable. I ain't ate. They cooking dinner. Smell good. I like how they cook. I'm going to leave tomorrow. And do you know the next day, I could have, I could have almost not made it. I got into a really bad altercation with that person. It could have not ended the right way. I got jumped on. 
And when it all was said and done, and they got off of me, they was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I said, listen, you good. You good. I disobeyed God. I heard God clearly tell me to leave last night. Your obedience is not contingent upon someone else. Okay? There's always going to be somebody or something that makes you get out of alignment. Make you just a little, just a little, you know, you ain't got to do all of that. Listen, you know the instructions that God has given you for your life, yourself, your future. Sometimes that goes against the opinion of others. Don't keep arguing back and forth. You don't have to give an account to anybody but God about what he's doing in and through your life. Our word today is turn the page. Let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. So as we are on this journey and as you're finding the 2 Kings, um, the Lord has put it on my heart to move. And I'm like, okay, God. I've been trying to scramble to keep everything afloat and the Lord gave me a dream. And in the dream, I had taken everybody to the movie theater. And so it was the movie theater where they had the recliner. The people's feet was kicked up and eating their popcorn. And the kid, everybody was good watching the movie, enjoying themselves. But I was the only one running around doing everything. And I said, you got you need, you got you need, okay, you got what you need. Okay, let me get your stuff in. Here, you need that hula, put your baby socks on, come on. So I'm running all around doing all the things. And then somebody asked for something that I was going to have to go out to the concession stand to get. So I go out to, the, I'm, I'm headed, you know how they have the long hallway on the side of the movie theater where you go out the door. So as I'm walking out the door, I'm walking towards the door, there was this bright light. And at first I was like, ooh, that's bright. But then as I kept looking, it kept getting brighter and brighter and bigger and brighter, and it was Jesus. It was the glory. And as I'm watching, then everything behind me, the movie, the people, none of that didn't even matter no more. I couldn't worry about any of that. And the Lord was showing me, he said, the people have become spectators. I'm comfortable with you doing everything. Yeah. And I'm moving. The glory is now outside the door. Beautiful. That's good. That's good. I wrestled with it. I was like, what, oh, God? So I'm struggling, struggling, struggling with it. I'm struggling. And then I happened to hop on Facebook and while he designer was preaching a message. And I, I hopped on there. And, and, and when I tell you when God wants you to know a thing, I don't turn on the news to figure it out. I go to the people of God that I believe yeah. are people of God. She said, she said, she, she was preaching out of this very text. But the part that she began to talk about was she said, don't be discouraged because you have to let it go. It was only borrowed. The Lord let you borrow those children. Yes. He let you borrow that man. He let you borrow that woman. He let you borrow that ministry. You upset it was borrowed. It was not yours. You're taking too much ownership. You get too, too attached. Get too upset. I said, ooh. I know you're talking to me, God. But as we were reading through the text, the Lord began to speak to me. So I got what I needed from what she said. But then the Lord began to speak to me. So let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6. Lord, we thank you for this word on today, oh great God. We thank you that you're still speaking. May we not count it as common. That you're still speaking to your children. That you're still loving on us. That your faith has not turned from us, God. That you're still correcting us. That you're still patient with us. That you keep no records. Wrongdoing. That your love, it always preserves. It always keeps us intact. And it never fails. We thank you for speaking today, oh great God. We are your children and we are listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put your hand on your chest. Say, have your way. In this place. In this place. Amen. Second Kings 6 and 1 says, One day, the group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, As you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. 
Before she, I said, wait a minute, Lord, hold on. I'm supposed to be listening to what the woman of God is saying. But the Lord said, I'm speaking yes. to you. Yes. This place that we are meeting in is too small. The way that you are thinking about your business is The way that you've been thinking about your marriage the limits that you have put on me, how I'm going to do a thing in your life. Glory. We have limited our thinking. We, got, we, got, we, got, we have to understand that God is bigger than what we can, we can understand. Okay, I've been taking deep breaths all week, so if you have to take a couple, bless God, just get it on me. Okay, because sometimes we get so attached to people. When they have to go, we feel like we're not going to survive. We're not going to make it. We're not going to, oh, if they leave, oh, God. If they leave, the Lord has now made room for somebody else. He's made room for you to step up, grow. My come God, on, come on. as I was as I was preparing the message this morning, and I'm like, oh God, I said, Lord, I feel like a mama bird kicking the babies out the nest. Yes. Come on, Lord Jesus. Let him fly. <laughs> Let him fly. Woo. As you can see, yeah. this place yeah. where we meet is too small. Let's go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. There we can build a new place for us to be. Oh. All right, then, he told him, go ahead. Please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell off into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. Where did it fall? The man of God asked. Where did, when he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water at that spot. Then the axe head floated to the surface, grabbed it, Elisha said, and the man reached out and grabbed it. Our word today is turn the page. Now I read the whole text and now we're going to go through, we're going to understand and examine what the Lord was showing me as I read this, the place we are meeting in is too small. The situation, the lifestyle that you're living in has become too small. The way of thinking. Listen, some, many of us, we don't want to move outside of the state. We don't want to go. No, I'm comfortable, honey. I don't need no new car. My car get me from A to B, but God got some. Your blessing is in it. On down the road with JK. If your car only gets you from A to B and, and your blessing is in JK, but you don't like to travel, yeah. come on. It yes. could be your husband. It could be your wife. It could be your business. It could be your ministry. My God, it could be your healing. It could be your deliverance. Yes. But you got to be willing to come out of the small mindset yes. right. you have put on God. Right. I don't want to bury a black man. Well, he might got a white man for you. Right. All right. <laughs> come on. You got to be willing to come out of the parameters. Yes. You will put God in a box. Yeah. Little tights. You know, I'm going to meet my man right here in this city, and that's just where he's going to be. Well, he ain't in that city. Mm -hmm. So what you going to do now? Mm -hmm. You're going to miss your blessing. That's fine. The parameters that you're living in are too small. I got to work a nine to five, or I'm not going to pay these bills. But he's put a multi-million dollar business in your hand in seed form. Man. You too scared to go after the blessing. The parameters that you are living in are too small. Yeah. Right. Ooh, I gotta stay with this person, God. I got. Let me tell you what it sounded like for me when I was a single mother. I mean, when I was married in an abusive relationship and he wasn't doing right. He didn't know where home was or where our bed was. He didn't know where those things were living. And so I got so depressed and anxious, anxiety. Then I'm having suicidal thoughts and I'm struggling with all this. But I gotta stay with him because his kids with me. You know, we got kids together and I don't really know what else to do. And I'm gonna be a single mother. I don't wanna be no single mother. And I ain't gonna make it without him. The parameters. Jesus. My thinking too small. What you mean? God ain't gonna help you provide for the children. He allowed. Come into this earth. Yeah. Some 
some people you trying to stay with because it's your children's father or the mother of the children. And God only wanted the DNA. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. My God. Ooh, Lord. I have mercy. He only wanted the DNA. Just struggling to stay with somebody that's tearing you down left, right, sideways. I left the battle of that relationship so mentally. Doo -doo. Took 11 years to get back to a place where I realized, well, this ain't even, this was the, all this I've been doing is a response to the trauma that I've been through. Yes. I don't even drink. You're drinking and you don't oh, even drink. Come on. You picked up smoking. Yeah. Oh. You was against smoking. Be the first one. That little one right there. Oh, drinking is bad. Now, if he go up and start drinking, now I have to understand that is a response to some trauma. Yes. You don't even believe in that. Come on. What are you doing now? Bless the Lord. You didn't even believe me. Bless the Lord. It is a response. Thank you, God. To trauma. It is. We got children that have grown up in the church that now say they don't even believe in God. It is a response to trauma. Something that you have seen, experienced, or went through. That's right. But it's a false identity yes. that you have taken on as a lifestyle. My God. Somebody born as a boy living their life as a girl. Yes. It is a response to trauma. You gotta see people correctly. Stop judging people all the time. Oof. It is a response. When, when you see that, you just have to say, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's a trauma response. They've been through. It's not yeah. natural. Come on. Come on, you know that's not, but you can't condemn it. When you see somebody who's a drunk or an alcoholic or a drug addict, that is a response. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But they have been through. Amen. Let, let me help you. My husband used to be faithful and good and kind and wonderful. I don't know what happened now. He's crazy and doing all the things to the left. That's a response to some trauma Amen. that has happened in his life and may have been buried. Mm -hmm. When you met him, something triggered we all have trauma responses. Yes. Go back, catch the, the series that's on my YouTube channel from last week. It'll bless you. But we're getting to a place where we have to be willing to turn the page. Yes. That means do something else. Do something different. See, God is so amazing. He puts people in our path. Some for a lifetime. But when he puts a life-changing person in your path, it's for a season. Because they have work to do. They can't just be with you their whole life. My God. My God. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of the people. You have been a person that God has put in someone's path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was your assignment and you dated it. It was your ministry for a season and you married it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jesus. Yep. How do I know it's my assignment? Because they don't live like you. Oh. Come on. Come on. Because they, they go back and forth. But you, wait a minute, you're arguing. You, you going, wait a minute. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. Don't marry your assignment. Minister to it. Yeah. And move on. Come on. That is good. Many have married their assignments and now you're living with him. Struggling and stressed out. Ain't got no peace. You knew your house was peaceful before you got with that person. Now you can you sit in the car 30 minutes before you come in the house because there's so much hell in there. Jesus. That ain't God. Amen. It's time to turn the page. The Lord is moving some things around. He presents opportunities. You can't get mad because the people didn't take the opportunity yes. while you were there in their lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just tell me when you meet them, listen, I love you, but I'm seasonal. Oh. Okay, I'm seasonal. I love you. We can still stay connected, but I'm seasonal because I have a work to do. Yeah. My God. I'm passing through. Oh, yeah. And when my assignment is complete, Go on to the next 
That's the mandate on your life. You only sent to that job for a season. That's why when you get there, it's chaos and hell and crazy and all that, because you're sent there to straighten it. That's the assignment on your life. Get comfortable. Stretch it out. Why always crazy people attracted to me? Because it's your assignment, but don't marry what you're supposed to minister to. Oh, my God. We got to get that. Because many of us have married what we're supposed to minister to, y'all. My God. As you can see, this place where we are meeting is too small. Let us go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of laws. Mm -hmm. There we can build a new place for us to meet. He, he says here, there are plenty of laws there. Mm -hmm. That's not going to make sense until we keep going down in the story. But right now, I want you to just take note that your next season is going to come equipped with everything that you need. Everything you need is going to come in your neck. Every, you want, everything you won't need, it's going to be in the room. It might be in seed form. It might be in full measure. But your next season is locked and loaded. Amen. He said, there we can build a new place for us to be. So, it's time to get ready to work again. Build a new. Don't get that confused with build again. Because sometimes we want to build again the same thing we already did. Well, that didn't really. Some things we built didn't really work out. It's time to build a new. Let God give you the new blueprints. I know what you did in that last season, God. But is that still what you do? We got to be willing to check back in with God about what he is doing. Amen. All right, he told them, go up, go ahead. Please come with us, someone suggested. Listen, when I tell you the Lord, just, it was like the words jumped off the page and slapped me in the face. Because the Lord was trying to help me understand your next blessing may come by way of suggestion. So if you are a person who only can take your own thoughts, you might miss your blessing. All right. If you don't take nobody's suggestions, you might miss your blessing. Yeah. Because the, the, the next season comes with suggestions. Because sometimes we get so caught up in our everyday life, we forget those things that are on the inside of us. And so somebody who's been looking at you for six months, a year, six years, all your life, and they say, bro, you should really, man, you should really take note of the suggestions that you're getting in this next season. Yes. Take note of the suggestions that you have left on the table and have not picked up. Mm. Many people are not living in purpose because your blessings are still sitting on the table. You're not willing to take the suggestion. Because you, to take the suggestion, you have to leave one place and go to another. All right. He said, come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. So he went with them. It takes your participation. You got to be willing to leave the season behind. And when I say leave the season behind, many of us, we're good with leaving it behind, but then we go back and get it. Pick it back up. Yeah. Leave it behind. Right. Just like you left kindergarten. Are you still going back there every day? When you graduate high school, are you still going back there sitting in the class every day? Right. Right. But we keep going back, sitting in the classroom of life with broken people in broken situations and we're doing it year after year after year after year after year after year. They ain't changed by now. Come on. They ain't going to. Come on. They haven't changed. How long did it take for God to change you? Now, God is amazing and he takes different times with people and all of those different things. But you can't let nothing slow you down in this season. Lay aside every weight. Some people are just weight. Every time you get in a presence, you come down. Jesus. Every time you get on the phone, you roll your eyes before you even answer. Lay aside 
every weight so easily besets you. What do you mean? But it, it, it throws me off course. Being in your presence, I got the joy of the Lord when I walk up to you and then by the time I leave, I want to cuss and everything. I'm looking for a drink and I've been delivered from drinking. Now that's crazy. Lay aside every weight. My God. Everybody cannot be attached to your favorite. Many, many of us struggle with leaving people behind. I don't know why though, because the same God is still in control. You actually put yourself in a God-like position. Yes. You think you're God. When you can I can't leave people because they're not gonna get they not gonna get what they need. Baby, I'm limited. I'm just Julia. I tell my children, I'm just mama. Amen. I love you. I love you, but I'm just mama. That's it. That's it. We have to be willing to let God be God in people's lives. Many people won't be able to get to God because you have been so accessible. Let them catch the bus. Yeah. They don't need a ride every time. That's right. Bless Amen. God. There comes a season to give a ride, mm -hmm. and there comes a season to give a bus pass. Yes. God, I bless your name. Yes. And there comes a season to give a prayer, and that's all I got. That's it. Because we're handicapping people. Thank you, Jesus. Stop bailing your children out every time. Every time. My son just turned 18. He's on his go and see the world kick. Call me 2 a.m. Mama, can you get me an Uber? No, I cannot. He's in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's not good in Cincinnati, Ohio. They're killing, shooting, murdering, doing all kinds of things they're doing. No, I cannot. You being me. No, I cannot. It's 2 a.m. I'm not out at 2 a.m. You should have figured out where you were supposed to be before now. But see, but you know why I can rest on that? Because God already told me something. Come on. The Lord said, whenever that boy calls out to me, I'm showing up. He, my God. Oh my God, whenever he calls out to me, I'm showing up. Hey, so I got to get out of the way. Yes. Oh, they will never cry out to God. Yeah. You keep rescuing them every time. They let them fall. They're going to be all right. A righteous man. Come on, fellas. Fall. Come on. Seven. Seven. Let them learn how to fall. Come on. Let them learn how to get back up. All right. Don't be Thank God. Oh. Jesus. Still in control. Jesus. 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 Got to turn the Thank page you. on some of these kids. Come on. Oh, my God. Got to turn the page on some of these crazy people. God, I bless your name. Come on. Got to turn the page on some of the mindsets oh. that you have. God has been trying to bless you, but you won't Come on. Oh, my. Jesus. Turn the page. Speak it over your own life. I'm broke. But I ain't broke. Come on now. Some point you have to be willing to try the spirit by the spirit to see if it is of God. All right. This next season requires work. Amen. But it's worth it. Amen. Verse 4. So they went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. What? When you get to your next season, when you accept the report of the Lord, when you start the business, when you begin writing the book, when you do whatever that thing is that God has put, you got to be ready to work. work. Many don't get their blessings because they lazy. I'm just going to pray about it and watch God work. No. <laughs> no. Glory. no, that ain't, that's not how it's going to happen. He's not a genie in a bottle. Yes, God. Come on. My Must God. Jesus Christ bear the cross alone and the wow. rest of the world go free? <laughs> yeah. Work is ahead of you. It's time to it's time build again. Time. Take Hallelujah. your ten fingers. Yeah, whatever God. your gift is, my God. Pity party, Whatever you ain't got time for it. That's it. Don't worry, you ain't got time for it. If you have helped somebody else build their business, come on. You done been faithful over another man's vineyard. Oh, what you mean you can't be an entrepreneur? You was built for it. Listen, let's go back to the beginning of the service. 
It was necessary for you to work hard, hard, long shifts. It was necessary to have a, a boss that was worrisome and on your back, oh. getting on your nerves, because it built something in you. Yes, God. <laughs> Make sure you tune in to Makeover Ministry yeah. tomorrow because we're going to talk about soft batch cookies are meant to be eaten. <laughs> We're too fragile. Our children are too fragile. Everything. Oh, when does suicide become an option? Come on. Oh, this ain't working. I'm just going to take my life. My God. I'm not being funny. My God. We're too fragile. Yes. Not an option. Amen. Get up. Amen. Begin again. Fight back. Come on. Quit laying down crying every day. I ain't got time to cry into no more headaches. I ain't got time to cry into no more puffy eyes. Either you gonna get on the train and we going up. My God, I'm packing my two bags and I'm out. Come on. My God. Staying too long in a dry place kill you mentally, emotionally come out of that dry relationship. God has given them grace. Break it, Lord. Break it. Yes, she cannot. We got religious-minded people making you stay in marriages that are killing you, that are killing your children. And they're looking at marriage wrong, and then they're not going to want to get married because they think men are abusive and women are liars. I'm out. It's not yeah. of God. Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Yeah. If he's not loving you like Christ loved the church, he's already divorced you. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wives, submit yourself unto your husband as unto the Lord. If they're not doing it, they've already divorced you. Yeah. We're married on paper. But God has turned his back. My God, my God. You time to turn the page. That wasn't even in my notes. That's God. Come on. Oh, my God. Bless you. Thank you, God. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was, a, it was a borrowed axe where it did fall, the man of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water. Wait a minute, let's go back up to verse 2. Now, because when you go to this next season, yes, problems are going to be there. Problems uh -huh. happen. Okay, so don't get yourself so, oh, I'm going to the next season and there ain't going to be no problems. The devil's alive. It's going to be problems because problems come with life. But everything you need, mm -hmm. Jesus, my God, is in your season. Come on, let's go back to verse 2. Let us go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of laws. All right. See, wait a minute. What's going well, I didn't understand why that had to be in the text. It didn't make no sense until we get down here to verse 6. Where did it fall? The man of God asked. He, when he showed him the place Elisha cut a stick, he went over to the logs. Because there was plenty of them already there. Yes. Come on. He already, what you need is already ahead of you. Don't fall Amen. apart at the appearance yes. of problems as you go forward. Amen. Amen. You're going to get kicked back. But God. Uh, Thank you, God. I remember my last pastor, he said a man came up to him and said, can you pray for me that the devil would stop attacking? Oh. He said, all right, I'm going to pray that you die. Because he's not going to stop. Problems are a part of life. We have to learn to get some flexibility in us. Thank you, God. Our children are fragile. and They got all these A, B, C, D, E, F, G letters that they put on our children. And all it is is that they have no, they have no, 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 no uh, uh, flexibility in them. They don't know how to be talked about. You will stop telling your kids, ain't nobody going to talk about Johnny. People are going to talk about Johnny. But it don't make it true. If you have already spoken over your children and solidified in them the word of God, what these other people say won't matter. The problem is you have not given them 
have their identity. Come on. Amen. Come on. Somebody walk in here right now and holler, Pastor Bob, I'm not going to say yes because that is not my name. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. So when your children are upset about names that people are calling them, you have to solidify what you call them yeah. and what God calls them. Come on. We don't fight bullies at the bully level because they're just responding to the trauma that they already beat. Yes, God. Like somebody's bullying them. Somebody's mistreating them. Yes. My God. But if you learn how to put so much oh. burn in your belly, in your belly yes. belly, yes. then when they get to school, my God, and the bully yes. runs on them, they begin to say, Satan, get me behind me. Come out of that child in the name of Jesus. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. Mm. You have to learn to walk in dominion. Yes. We are the people of God. Stop walking around the feet. Turn the page. Amen. Woo! Yes, God. Glory! Thank you, Thank you God. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Problems will arise. Hallelujah. We'll go back to the blueprint. Thank you, God. That's why writing is so important. The Word of God says, write the vision and make it plain. Now, I'm all for marriage. I know I love marriage, marriage ministry. I love it. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I definitely believe in for better or for worse, but I don't believe in bringing worse in your own home. Mm-hmm. For better or for worse means sickness. That means financial crisis. That means that his mother might pass away and you got to comfort him for a season. Those things, but not you cheating and all of that beating on them. That ain't, that ain't for better or for worse. That's crazy. That's crazy. And so we have to understand that you got to go back to the blueprint. When life gets hard and it gets frustrating yeah, and finances yeah. get tight, no, go back to the blueprint. Yeah. Why did you love them in the first place? What made you smile about them in the first place? Come on. When the kids start acting crazy, because you know they do every now and again, bless God, go back to the blueprint. Oh, you know, listen, I, my son, he's in his blessed season, so I got his baby picture up on the wall when he was when he was sweet to my heart. That's my testimony for me and myself and him, and it just helps us. Okay, bless God, yeah. That's, that's the one I'm talking to right now. I don't know this one right now. Bless God. Go back to the blueprint. Yes. Take yourself back to the blueprint. Yes. 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 When I'm trying to lose weight, I got to go get me, honey, find one of them size six pictures because this size 12 ain't working out so good. Put that, put that size six on the refrigerator. Right. Okay. So now, put it, listen, get it blown up real big size, y'all. Put it on all the cabinets. Somebody come in and girl, you can see it. Now, baby, I'm reminding myself of the blueprints. Hey, come on. Come on. Woo. Okay. Come on. You just see you what you went 
witness is, 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 is the little the little sprout that broke ground for what you didn't see. So, okay? It's when I had to find the ground. Okay? And, and it was rocks on it. I had to move the heavy rocks. God, I bless your name. Come on. And keep moving the heavy rocks. God, I bless your name. All by myself. Because there wasn't nobody else there but me and God. My God. Then, then I had to take a little break because I got taught because I hurt myself. My God. Had to go on sick leave. God, I bless your name. Got back to the land and began moving the rocks. Then I had to till the soil. And, and, and 
as I look back, I was like, God, you was already speaking about. Ooh. I made a post one Sunday and, and, and I said, um, be careful how you miss church. I'm going to go next Sunday. It's right. And I'm just watch online. I don't feel like going in. Uh -huh. Be careful because there's going to come a day. You want to. Okay. 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 I thought she was going to Listen, I, was, I didn't have no direct attention. I didn't, I didn't know until like the Lord reminded me this morning as I was driving. I was like, oh, Lord, you was already speaking. So I had no intention. I didn't. I had no. Oh, this is definitely. Um, I'm giving it to you as I get it. I'm giving it to you as I get it. That's Amen. all I can do. <laughs> but it has been a blessing. It has been a privilege. It has been an honor. I have seen every person that crossed that threshold. Yeah. I've seen growth. Amen. Amen. And that is amazing. That is beautiful. So I'm excited. You know, you've seen me. You've seen me on good days, middle days, sad days. You've seen me fall. You've seen me get back up. I hope you learned from me. I hope you, you you got something good. I hope you took words of encouragement, words of wisdom. There has been impartation. This house, deliverance, healing. It has been so much that has been going on this house and this place. That though it is time for me to move forward, I, I can move forward knowing that you got what you need. That's yeah. it. That's it. Amen. That is, Amen. That is so beautiful to me, y'all. We're going to go forward. I will still be live Monday through Friday doing makeover ministry, but I will be preparing to leave, so I got to take time and break down everything and sell everything, get rid of everything, whichever way this thing is going. Um, and I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited about what, what's coming next for y'all. But I didn't want to say nothing because I know you didn't have enough money. Oh, God. I reached in my pocket. I had $42 to my name. I said, well, heaven, I don't got a lot of money, but we can go to Walmart and get some shoes. So we go to Walmart. We get the little shoes. She was happy. She goes to visit her daddy a couple of weeks later. And she said, daddy said, why did you give me these cheap Walmart shoes? She said, I told daddy, uh, shoes are only to protect your feet from the ground. So I don't really know what he was upset about. She said, then you just walked. <laughs> because some wisdom that comes from a child <laughs> okay she was like just to protect your feet from the ground daddy none of that other stuff matters the late one all of that doesn't matter and so I bless God she has she was so patient on that journey she was whew, she she was there a lot of days when I felt like I didn't have nothing else to press forward her little smile would pop up or she I remember one night I, I laid hands on her in the middle of the night and I, I laid hands on my belly and I began to pray over her. And then I went to sleep. About 10 minutes later, I felt a little hand on my belly. Woo! And she began to pray over her mama. So train up a child. Yeah. In the way they shall go. When they get older, when they get mature, they might stray when they're younger and they're immature. But the word says when they get mature, they will not depart. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, these are so fun. Come here, sweetheart. I don't care for this mic, and I don't care for this stuff there. Facebook, your book, my book, whoever book it is. But this is my child standing here. Yeah. 
This is personal this morning. Mm -hmm. And I want to say to her, how can I say thanks? Mm -hmm. All you've done. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about nobody else. I know the things you've done for the people behind closed doors, in front of people, only with God, in the midnight hour. Right, right. People talking about you, which is part of the beast of standing up here ministering. God said you would be persecuted. Just for knowing me. Yeah. Don't even start trying to preach and pray and prophesy. You will be persecuted just for knowing me. Yes. A lot of people have came through them doors, wanted, begging, needed safety. People were looking for them, trying to hurt them. People needed Love, affection, prayers, prayers, prayers. They want all of these things out of you and drain you and sap the very life out of you. Don't want to make no changes. And he said, if my people who are called by my name That's right. shall humble themselves, yes. seek my face. I ain't going to say it right because I'm full, but you get the gist of it. Turn. She said turn the page. He said turn from your wicked. Wicked ways. He can dress up all the wrong crowd, we want everything else, but God knows your heart. He knows what he's what she's done for people. They'll never tell it. Too much pride. Too much pride. Even people that can't stand her guts right now are watching how you do it. We still standing. Still standing. We're gonna still stand. With or without you. Does she hate anybody? She's ever helped. Does she hold grudges? I'm her mother. I can tell you she don't. She's my sweetest child. I have two. Y'all be all care about you opening your mouth back there. You know who you are. You are Behind closed doors. Hell low. How you doing? I'm about to ruin your lifestyle this morning. Don't do it, Mama. Okay. I'll be nice. Be not like Miss J. But God knows. He knows the times people needed her. People have came to her when they couldn't even go to their own family. Yeah. People have gone to her when they couldn't have gone to their own family. Amen. She's done all kinds of things. I'm not yeah. going to keep talking because you know who you are. Yeah. And you might need her again. We were supposed to be loving each other, looking out for one another. Saving souls, fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he that saves souls is wise. But no, too many people walk through those doors concerned about her personal business. When you had so much of your own, you even made God twist his head a little bit when you came to him. My God, my God. How can you say you love me? Whom you've never seen and hate your fellow man. Whom you see that you are in. And the truth is not in you. People have came through those doors and said things and done things very inappropriate. And I've sat in this church and I've watched things. I didn't say a word because I don't judge. He said, love ye one another as so I have loved you. And that's the way we gonna always do it, ain't we, Jay? It's not about your love. You want anything else, you're gonna have to go somewhere else because she's closing the doors anyway. And for all the people that thought they could do what she could do better, mm -hmm. open your own church now and preach to yourself. My God, amen. Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Preach to yourself. Amen. 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 
I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. This is my child. Don't come for her. If we're not going to come for you, we're going to seek God on you. I'm going to tell my Jesus on you. And we forgive anybody that has said or done anything inappropriate to this woman of God. Vengeance is still God's. Am I right? I did the Bible to Hey, thus saith the Lord. You shall be repaid. But oh, we forgive you, but God have mercy on you. So woman of God, you preached and prophesied everything about the boat, begging people to stay on the boat. Some of them jokers jumped out. Some of them fell off. Some of them got pushed off. Some of them went to sleep. And we gonna stay in the boat. We're going we're gonna to seek to the end of this thing to see yeah. what the end's going to bring. Hey! We're going to keep on keeping on. Yeah. We ain't going to look back. We're going to keep our hands yes. to the plow. Yes. God is faithful. I say well done to you this morning. Amen. Thy good and faithful servant. Amen. You've been faithful.